So this week we're talking about a portion of the men's community that is crucial for men all around. Whether you are think you've got your your community pillar nailed down pat and it's just as strong as can be or not, there's one little aspect that more men need to have, and that is a men's group. We're going to be talking about that this week on episode 110 of The Relaxed Mail. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail, a podcast that helps men change their relationship with themselves. I am your host, Brian, and I am a men's life and mindset coach who is here to help you understand that you don't have to suffer at your own expense. You can live your dream, and I encourage you to set, then pursue your goals. So join me as I change the mindset and attitudes of men so that they can be the leaders of their families and their destinies. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relax Mail. All right, so this week we're talking about getting a bunch of men together and just having a men's group. Uh, men's groups are just one of those elements that used to happen quite a bit, but yet have, have fallen away in the past 30, 40 years. And they're crucial to the benefit and to the growth and to masculinity in general we are needing that that masculine energy to to rub off on us and for us to contribute our masculine energy to other men and this is something that a lot of men don't have don't have men's groups especially when they get married all of a sudden they forsake their dreams and their their friends and they leave them behind and before you know it, their life is miserable. They're wondering uh, where their friends are. They realize that they have walked away from their friends. And all of a sudden, they don't have that that positive masculine influence that they really need. These these groups are not just anywhere. Our, well, correction. No, <laughs> actually, they are everywhere. It's just a lot of times us men don't care to take the time to go out and look for them. Because you can find men's groups and or groups spe- uh, specifically for men in churches, schools, civic organizations. You can even find men's groups uh, or men coming together in your places of employment, or even in your neighborhood. You can get neighbor. You can get a men's group set up anywhere, and you can you can make a men's group, or you can join men's groups, or you can just have a group of men who meet each other on a regular basis. And that's the essence of what a men's group is, is the regular seeing of each other. Now, some men, they uh, will once a year, they'll come from across the country and they'll all meet up at a hunting camp and they'll all go hunting for the, uh, for a week. And that does, that suffices for what they need. They Re- ritualistically come together. They sit around, they talk, share old uh, hunting stories and enjoy some deer jerky or whatever it is that they're hunting. And they, they lift each other up. They are involved in each other's lives because not only are they just meeting on that one time of the year, they're reaching out and they're talking to each other all through the year. Now it's not, they may not all get together, but they're reaching out. They're calling each other up. They're shooting emails. They're, they're, commenting on what's going on in their lives men who are are noble need other noble men because as jim Rohn says you are the average of the five people you should spend the most time with and i've often said show me your friends and i'll show you your future this is one of those reasons why you want to have a men's group together now as you start going out and you start meeting people and you start getting together, you'll actually start creating those deep bonds that are needed. You'll start reaching out to your friends and uh, their family and just making sure that they're all okay. And you start really influencing and living your life with these other men. And this is one of those beautiful things that actually happen and why masculinity is such a great thing and is needed more in society than what. It actually is nowadays, because when you have a strong 
group of men who meets on meets <laughs> who meet on a regular basis, you start having a lot more success in many, many different parts of your life. I mean, not just the business, but you're if you're if you're an employment if you're employed, good. You guess what? You're gonna end up having improvement in, in your work status. You're gonna end up getting uh a lot better advancements, promotions, things like that, all because of this. Your your love life will actually even improve because your marriage will grow because you are actually starting to step into your masculinity. You're actually starting to live your life as a man, not as a good guy, as a nice guy. Those people who are not, not worthy of the, of the, of the life they actually are wanting to be able to get those, that level of life. You actually need to have a very masculine set of beliefs. And so to do that, you need a men's group. So why a men's group? Well, simply put, a, a, a men's group is fulfills the need for men to have other men in their lives. Now, a men's group can be, like I said, anything. It can be guys getting together every Saturday to play basketball. And, but it's not there. They're not there just for the basketball. They're there to be a part of each other's lives. They end up having talks and discussions. Maybe they come over to each other's houses once a week and they each bring their favorite type of, uh, of alcohol and they have, uh, drink, uh, libations, libations and they enjoy being around each other. They share, they have their problems and, and concerns and, Things along those lines. And those actually, the other men are able to come in and help. Most men's groups are actually what's called a mastermind. And mastermind in the last couple, three years has really gotten a bad rap. It is a, because so many people hear, hey, I'm doing a mastermind and blah, 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 blah. And that mastermind ends up being a, actually a group coaching session where you have one guy who's just a sir and he talks about him pontificates and talks about all these other things. And the other guys really don't interact with each other. They're looking to the, to the guy who is speaking and that's all that they're doing. While masterminds are a bit on the different side. Masterminds actually help in that every person is contributing. They're giving, everybody gives answers to a, a person's problem. And that person is able to, in turn, give him, give solutions to the rest of the men when they have a problem that they are addressing. As you share and as you do activities together, because men, we bond the best when we're around activities, whether it's, you know, it's uh, the Amish are real famous for their bond raising. That is a very civic oriented uh, activity. But it brings all the men together and allows them to to grow and to develop as they uh, as each time that they're going through and they're raising houses, uh, raising barns, building houses, things along those lines. And the reason why so many men these days have the view and so, uh, society itself has a view of what toxic masculinity is, is, again, because we have so many men who have not been a part of other men's lives and have other men be part of their lives. Nice guys really shy away from how masculine men really talk. Masculine men talk in a very assertive ma manner. Good way to, uh, to look at that is, is to listen how, with how maybe your granddad, if your grand, you've still got grandparents around or your, your parents, you go and you see, if you go to a, well, or go to a coffee shop in a small town and listen to a bunch of old farmers sit around and talk to each other. They may not even have the most direct, uh, confrontational, uh, discussions, but they always have very deep and thoughtful talks about what's happening in the, in the agricultural world, what's happening, um, uh, in the country in general. They usually will have, discuss what's going on in the news. They'll talk about what's going on in the families and things along those lines. They are all friends they, because they are constantly meeting. They usually meet around three o'clock in the afternoon at the local Dairy Queen. And when men don't have the masculine energy that they need, they look for the support that they need from their wives. And so they start burdening their wives with semi faux uh, masculine interactions. And 
they they are they start burdening their wives and they and the wives start becoming very resentful for what is actually uh going on they don't want to have to sit there and just deal with all this negativity that's piling in onto them day in and day out cuz the husband comes in and is like oh i don't i don't know we're not going to be able to get the uh, house payment this week or we're not going to be able to get the car you know we're not going to be able to meet all the bills we're, we're not making enough and the, the, all the worries that a guy has he starts trying to throw on to his wife and if he doesn't have men in his life to be able to take that, then he starts overwhelming his wife with all the negative news that's coming on. And that starts to cause her to worry about, well, dude, what's, what are we going to do here? Uh, you're supposed to be providing for the family and you're not. And even when roles are reversed, the guy still needs to be able to do that. He is the source. Men are the source of the positive energy for the woman. And while he does have the negative energy that he has to process, that's where the other men are able to handle that because we are designed to handle that negative energy, be able to process it in a different manner. And so as our friends, our male friends come around and they are talking about their problems and unload their issues onto, onto the rest of the group, they're able to, that frees them up to be able to go to the wife and hear what the wife is having problems with and is able to help her with her issues. As we build up and as men come to come to help each other out, these men's groups are will allow a man to fully form a, a new change and a new way of looking and thinking and acting and behaving and all the and how he interacts with his wife and how he interacts with his kids and how interacts with his boss and all that. And a lot of times those people are will become more confident in how they how they interact in life in general and that a boost of positive uh, of confidence and that boost of, of how they actually are are thinking of themselves and how they see the world makes their, everybody around him become better so but you can find a men's group just about anywhere but for whatever reason if you're out and about and you're looking around and you can't find a a men's group to uh, to join, or maybe there's a couple there, but they just really aren't fitting with you. They're you know they're either got one thing that's not not jiving with you, or they're the way they talk and the way they interact is uh, just not in morally sync with what you're doing. Maybe they're not uh, ambitious enough. Maybe they aren't driven enough, and you really want to get get a group of men together who are actually focused in on becoming successful and and help and lift each other up then dude you can actually go off and you can make your own men's group the uh it's it's really not hard the key to it all to making a men's group is being consistent choose a week, day of the week and you just keep showing up there showing up there maybe it's y'all are going to start uh having a uh having a coffee meeting for an hour in the back of a diner um and so you start start going and you tell a couple of people, hey, I'm having this group, and you show up. The first time you show up, you may have one guy show up. You may not have any guys. You may not have anybody show up for the next four weeks, but keep it up. And that's how you start actually bringing guys in because they're going to hear you talk about it, and they're going to hear you mention it time and time and time again. Eventually, they're going, you know what? I'm not doing anything right now. I think I'm going to go on ahead and head on over and see what this little men's group is. And he may show up and go, oh, dude, it's just you. Well, at the moment, it's just me. We need to get more people in. But as you start to meet at the basketball court or at someone's house or at the coffee shop or, um, you know, at the park or wherever it is y'all decide y'all want to meet, or you decide where they want to meet, then the group starts to grow. Because as one guy shows up and he realizes he's getting a little bit of value, more and more people will he will start telling other people and eventually they somebody else will show up and they'll tell their groups and they'll, they'll other people will share other, with their group and that group starts to grow and eventually you may have 10 20 people who show up every weekend you know at the same time at this diner and you know you're you get to have a very dedicated real masculine group of men who meet up on a very regular basis. But uh, when it comes to men's groups, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure you know what you're looking for 
in a men's group. Now, men's groups can uh, vary. There might be men's group who are there strictly for uh, church reasons. There's men group who may be there strictly for the purpose of, of helping each other out in business. And then you can have kind of a just a general it's, um, group of, uh, of, of guys together who are wanting to get who are wanting to just seriously help each other out. They see the value of hel- having other masculine men around, and so they want to to help each other become better men. Now, granted, you're also going to have guys who want to get together just to get drunk and play cards. Those, you know, those may not be the caliber of men that you actually want. And you want to be selective with who your group is, uh, who you allow in your group, because one of the main things is you need to have trust in a men's group, in any type of mastermind. What's said in the the mastermind, in the men's group, stays in that men's group. You don't have people going off and going, hey, you want to know what Tommy's thinking? You know, Tommy actually had had an affair with it on his wife, you know, a week ago. And uh, he feels real bad about it, but holy smokes, who would have thought, you know, you don't want gossip to be leaking out amongst the group, uh, from the group. But you do want guys who are dedicated and adventurous and and almost have the mantra of, hey, let's find out. If they want to try something, let's find out. Can we do this? Can we actually do this? Or is it, you know? Try it out and go, oh, well, well, you learned something from there. You know, you want these types of guys. And because you have the guys who are willing to push you out into your discomfort zones and you're willing to help encourage them get out into their uh, out of their comfort zones, y'all actually become stronger because, you know, that comfort zone area is the weak area. You don't get you don't get stronger until you actually do some actual stressful stuff. Still, you actually are taking the time to actually learn what's going on. And fail and, you know, break some stuff from time to time. And you fail and, and you don't reach those goals that you're actually wanting to reach. Now, something you do want to actually watch out for. There are some uh, a few things about men's groups that you want to be careful of. First off, like I kind of mentioned before, is pay attention to the caliber of men. If these are guys who just want to sit around and bitch, moan, and groan about everything, they're, pro- they're not going to be the guys you want. You don't want the guys who are sitting there playing the victims all the time. Um, those are not good masculine groups to be in. Pay attention to what's going on with the guys. When you do have a set group, pay attention to how those guys are acting. Is one personality really changing? Is he looking like he's going down a dark path? That's where the power of the of the men's group comes in. They come around and they help that one that is struggling and is in pain and is suffering. You're able to help those that guy, encourage him to open up what's actually bothering him. Y'all can sit there and hear and listen and see what's going on and decide, you know what, this is probably something you need to get over to some counseling. Here's, here's a counselor I've used, or here's a therapist I've talked to. Those can actually be important, powerful times when a man really needs his men's group. Another thing you want to make sure that you're paying attention to is that you're, the woman in your life is going to try to get in your way. And it's not because she doesn't want you to be a masculine man. No, she actually really wants you to be a masculine man. But she also needs to make sure that you are going, that you're dedicated to this. And so she's going to to step in and she's going to may start out calling, you know, teasing you and using and maybe even call it, uh, call your group a kind of a, a demeaning name. You know, it might be, you know, your little boy, you going to your little boys club now. And that's, can you handle that type of sarcasm? That Can you handle that little, those little jabs? If you can, you're good. You're stronger. You're better. You're, you're working your way through the, through the problem. She sees that you're not going to, that you're nowhere near as weak as you were at one time. Now, this, the testing also is, is a means to see, are you actually going to be dedicated to this? Because you were in a bunch of groups and stuff when we first married. And then when I got married, we married, you like left everything. And all of a sudden you're around me all the time. So are you just going to give up on them? Also, she wants to make sure that you are dedicated. Another thing that, um, another reason why girls, the women in your life will actually kind of step in your way and kind of block you and keep you from going to these men's group is because 
as you get better and as you become stronger and as you become more successful, those changes are going to become evident in your life. They're going to be seen and they're going to be felt by your wife. And as you become better, it's going to reflect on her that she's not doing much. And so that's going to cause her to feel very uncomfortable. And with her feeling uncomfortable, she's going to want to get back down to that baseline. And to have that, she's going to want to want you to stop being that being better than what you are. It's not out of malice. It's just out because she's uncomfortable with it. And you have to be okay with her being uncomfortable. And you may have to set up boundaries on that where you're going. No, honey, I'm going to this. I'm sorry. This is something I do every week now. And uh, we're just going to have to start work, living our lives around this group. And it, she may hurt her feelings a bit, but that's okay. She can handle that, those feelings being hurt. And if she absolutely can't, then, you know, that might be a, a topic that you bring to, to your men's group itself. And several times I've seen things like this happen, like where you go to a, uh, like if you had a group of men, who are going out uh, for for a day. And through the whole time, there's that one guy who's just getting bombarded by text from his wife or his girlfriend. Typically, it's girlfriends more than wives, but, and just, you know, it, it's drama, 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 drama. Oh my gosh, you, you know, some type of crisis is coming up and trying to get him to come back and to be with her because she's uncomfortable. And to be able to, Step away from that and just let her be uncomfortable allows her to become stronger in her own self while also showing her that you are dedicated to what the cause is at that moment. So, you know, be aware of, of what your girl's thinking, what your wife, what your girlfriend is actually thinking. Um, you also want to make sure that you're protecting your group um, because you may have people who come in who are not a good fit. They are coming in and they're looking out for themselves. They are just wanting to bitch, moan, and groan and have people feel sorry for them. And these will actually bring the energy of the group down and actually can drive a lot of your really top performing men in your group away. And you don't want that to happen. So you want to be very protective of the group. If you want to bring somebody new in after y'all been set up for a while, you can ask them, hey, we're going to bring this guy in. Everybody's going to interview him and then we're going to make it yay or nay. And protect that group. If it's a no, it's a hard no. Don't go, well, I'm going to bring him in just a little bit. And just for a time being, it's no. He's If the, somebody is not, uh, doesn't make the cut, he doesn't make the cut. Sorry, dude. I know you're my high school, you're my best friend from high school, but um, you're, you're not a good fit with the group. And be okay with that. You have to be all right. Now, you also want to make sure that you're in a group of equals. I kind of mentioned this before, where if you go in to a, into a men's group and all of a sudden there's just one guy who stands up in front of a podium and just sits there and talks for an hour. And then when you're done, y'all kind of get up, y'all meal around for about 15 minutes and everyone disperses. That's not a men's group. That is a teaching situation. That is a group coaching. You want to make sure that there's equal. Every man is of equal value. Every man is of equal stature. And yeah, you may have some men who are more successful than others and that's good. That's fine. You know, you know, you don't want to have men who are, you know, making a hundred million dollars a year and then also have a guy who is, you know, just made his first dollar. Those are two different fields, two different levels. And those can become that one. He, the, the new guy doesn't know enough about business to be actually of any real good success use to, to the highly successful guy in the area of business. But maybe that new guy is very good at another, another area where you see that the, the really successful guy is struggling. So you have to be able to be open enough to where you say, all right, there's this guy, there's this guy, we've got everybody and they help each other. And these are things that you actively, if, especially if you're the, the coordinator of the men's group, it will always be on you and you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with, yeah, it's Friday night uh, or Thursday night and it's time for uh, time for the men's group. I'm heading out and know that, Hey, I'm going to have 
10 people today. Probably next week it will be only five. And the week after that, we have 20. And it's going to swing. And as people start to form and, and build and grow and, and the relationships start to solidify, things will become a lot better. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and I do want to make a real special mention real fast. Um, the nonprofit group that I have talked about before, uh, Operation Tears of the 22, they are actually having a fundraising event coming up. And what it is, it's called um, The Weight of My Brother. And it's a 22-kilometer ruck march where we, uh, me and a bunch of other guys, we're going to put 22 pounds in our pack. And we're going to go tromp around for uh, for 22 kilometers. And this is going to be happening down in Chaffee's Crossing in Fort Smith, Arkansas uh, on February 22nd, uh, 2022. And so if you are in that area or you want to come to that area, you want to come hang out with us and carry a, uh, carry a heavy bag with us for uh, for a long distance, come with us. We'd love to have you there. We'd love to have the... Uh, the camaraderie and the and the support and we'd love to have everybody out there walking with us and and carrying uh, carrying a uh, a bag to that shows to help support the 22 soldiers a day that we lose due to suicide and so if you would like to be able to help um I've got a link over to uh uh to their event page or you can go to relaxmail.com forward slash ruck march and that will also take you over to their event bright page and get some more information about that. And actually, there's not just over at Chaffee Crossing, but there's another one up in Arkansas that we're going to be doing. And I'm going to be grabbing that information and throwing that up also. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you go. Thanks so much for listening. If you've heard anything on here that you really found impactful or found that somebody else needed to hear, then uh, share this out. Share this out on on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Any social media site that you have, if you know of a particular guy who could really benefit from it, then shoot him a text with a link to the, uh, to the, to the episode. Let's share, start sharing the relaxed male message out with all the other men so that they can actually see and hear and uh, uh, appreciate the power that masculinity has. And why the nice guy in our lives needs to actually just take a hike and go away and never come back because he's not going to help anybody. So, guys, with that, thank you again for listening. Appreciate uh, appreciate you tremendously. And we'll talk to you next week. Till then, bye.